Good morning guys, it is the middle of winter here in Australia at the moment and I want to kind of take you guys on a tour of the garden, show you everything that's growing and everything that's not, um, so kind of do a bit of a walk through, so come along and let's see what's growing here. The first thing you might see is our herb boxes, we've got rosemary growing and then we also have some mint on the other side. The mint is looking pretty scraggly and I'm wondering whether I need to cut it back down but they are there. Of course, as the weather drops, a lot of things aren't coming up and the ground's looking pretty wet and pretty sad. So we're going to have to add a lot of compost to this and bring it back to life over the winter season. Our parsley has gone to seed. Our rhubarb is trying to grow and put out new shoots, but I think I've overpicked it at this point um, and it's a bit slow growing. You can see at the end of the bed there is some leeks and some sage as well. The sage is looking a bit sad too. Most things are just pretty wet and cold at the moment, which is expected. Now on the other side of the garden bed, this is one of the first two beds that we ever created. You can see my zucchini has finally called it quits um, and he's no longer producing. Over here, the broccoli experiment. Let me give you guys an update. So as far as new growth, it kind of looks like maybe there's something there, but I could just be hopeful. Here they kind of looks like there's some Brussels sprouts, so it may or may not work. Not sure. Again, everything's very wet and saturated, needing some warmth. All right, let's talk about this bed down here. Nasturtiums are going crazy and the leaves are huge at the moment like bigger than my hand oh one thing i wanted to say with nasturtium flowers they put out these pods that look like this and at the moment my nasturtium pods are just getting huge you can grind these up into a paste that although it's not spicy like wasabi has a really nice uh, fresh flavor so if you ever see these pods and you think your nasturtiums are getting a bit crazy pick them and actually eat them. The nasturtium flower is great because you can use almost every part of the plant. Flower, wasabi flavored leaves, and then the pods as well. My lettuce has gone to seed, which I'm not too upset about. It's kind of a good thing when vegetables go to seed because the seeds are going to be more climatized to your environment. They're going to work better in your soil and your conditions. So letting it go to seed when the plant doesn't do too well or when you don't really want to harvest from it is not a bad thing. So I'm really excited for these seeds and I'm going to have to collect them so that I can plant them next season. Our lemon tree is finally producing, which we love our lemons. And then down here we've got our chickpea plants so these ones here are chickpea plants and they're doing okay they're a bit scraggly trying to grow down the back and in most areas of our garden we also have either onion or garlic growing on the edges down in this bed I did also plant lots of carrot seeds and onion seeds so I'm yet to see if they come up um, as I mentioned before, it's pretty moist but cold around here. In the soil here, you might see lots of radishes torn up. Um, there's a big one there that's just been left. But I did grow radishes and they failed. So just like my lettuce, instead of letting it go to waste, I chopped and dropped the plants. Radishes have the ability to pull nutrients out from below the soil and bring it to the top surface so by chopping and dropping them I'm returning all of those nutrients back into the soil ready for the next plants. Um, this is the original bed so this is the very first bed we ever had on our property and it's bound to run out of nutrients that's why I've got the worm towers there which I need to start using again this bed needs some love but it does have a bit of broccoli at the end there. This is our first broccoli. But that's pretty much what this little garden bed looks like. Not too much is happening. Oh, I do have to show you the old tomato bed at the end there. So I'll show you that on our way to the other bed. But yeah, everything's pretty slow uh, growing here. The garlic is doing pretty well around the edges, as I said, and around plants. But other than that, not a lot is growing. 
over on this side we've got some flowers these are called Elysium and they are so beautiful and whimsical they've got these little little tiny flowers so pretty um, I do have spring onion planted there whether it grows or not I guess we'll see and then of course some more garlic on the edges here all right, let's talk about this garden bed here. So we've got lots of garlic growing in the center and that's doing pretty well. I did plant peas around the edges here, but my peas just don't seem to be surviving. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm still pulling them up and giving them another chance as they go. My basil has already died. And then at the front towards you guys, I've transplanted my bell chilies closer to here. Eventually I want all four of these garden beds to turn into perennial beds or herb beds um, because they're so close to the house it makes sense for them to be something we access all the time and just with the lack of sun during winter and how cold it does get in these beds I really want them to be thriving so yeah I'm still working on what's best to plant here but it seems like uh, peas are not the answer. <laughs> All right, over on the side here, we've got some volunteer tomatoes that I've staked up. I did talk about these in our last live as well. Um, so you can see how that's going. It's got some flowers on it and then hopefully it'll make its way up. Passion fruit. So we've got the little passion fruits there. Um, and then around here, we've got just some flowers for the bees. Our borage has already died and I've just returned it back to the soil. Nothing too exciting. Curry leaf plant is probably going to go dormant, but has produced really well and grown a lot. I have some pig face that I harvested from the beach that I'm going to have to um, plant into our food forest soon. If I move this, our daffodils are starting to come up now. See that? Very cute. Blueberry bush um, is dormant at the moment and perfect to replant. So I'm trying to figure out exactly where I want it. Thyme looking good kind of overtaken by clover but it's all right that's part of life you've got to compete for your place <laughs> so back here I've got more volunteer tomatoes and pea plants as well they're doing a little bit better than the last ones uh, but still not doing too much I transplanted one of our failed eggplants into here so we'll see if that comes up next year or not um, but also here we've got our bell chilies they did really well this season they're still producing um, but I did trim them back so they might not be producing as much and then we've got some flowers and like medic medicinal herbs here so we've got a new vine we've got the toothache plant um, and then some white sage and garlic. Garlic everywhere. <laughs> Over on the other side of the beds, um, this is where I've got my tulips and my flowers, my daffodils, my bulbs, all the things, um, as well as my fajoa tree, which is doing a lot better now that it's out of a pot so the ants aren't getting to it. Oh, before I move on from these though, I did almost forget the strawberries we have growing here aren't doing too much. They're going a bit yellow. <laughs> I've picked off all the flowers on them to give them plenty of chance to dig their roots in deep. Here we've got our lavender is still kind of growing. There you go. Um, and then we've got some sweet potato vines here. Not sure if they're doing too much. There were potatoes here, but I'm not sure that they survived. I've taken apart my sweet potato beds, so they're all gone. They're all done. Um, might add some dirt and try sprout those again, but for now, this is all I'm doing. 
All right, let's go into the big garden now. Nice foggy morning. So back here, I've actually sowed rows of peas, maybe carrots and artichokes as well. So right now I think it's still a bit cold and early on, so nothing's popped up yet, but I'll keep you guys updated on how that goes. In this garden bed, we mainly have a lot of root crops like potatoes, carrots, garlics, onions, leeks, but then we also have a combination of um, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, purple broccoli and cauliflower. Oh, and cabbage planted throughout these beds as well. So I've kind of integrated all those plants together, hoping that some will thrive with others um, and also deter different bugs away from one another. These are all potato plants and they're doing pretty well. Haven't been hit by frost yet. Oh, over here I also sowed some beetroot, so I'll let you know if that comes up. Um, but the wind has really affected this garden as well. You can see all these little things here are garlic and um, onion. These are probably onion. These ones are a Napa cabbage, I believe. So they're just doing their thing. Someone pooped out some seeds. It's weird looking. And then here we've got potatoes and garlic. Some of them did get pretty affected by um, the winds, so hitting up against these sticks. Uh, so they've been, they've looked better, but they're surviving. They're doing their thing. They're huge too. So I think we'll get some potatoes soon. And then the garlics are doing pretty well as well. This beautiful plant is a ginger. You can see the roots down here. Um, although I haven't dug down to find any rhizomes yet, but see them there. I like this plant too much to dig it out really. I'll be honest, but when we want it, it's there. I'm sure I can just break that off and eat it. Now, there we go. If I scoot around this way towards the fence, we do have some raspberry growing and it's got some new shoots coming out. We've got our blueberries as well doing really well. So hopefully we'll have some of those soon. The garden feels like it's growing really slowly at the moment and I keep expressing that. So I hope that if your garden feels a bit slow or like it's not really doing too much at the moment, just know that we're all feeling that way no matter how much is actually growing here. Uh, just plant some things, some roots into the ground and just forget about them for a while because that's going to be the thing that's going to give you a harvest at the end. You can see this bed's a fail. No sweet potatoes growing here, no potatoes growing here, um, pretty much nothing growing here. Oh, my artichoke. So I planted some artichoke. This is a Jerusalem artichoke and just instantly died. So I've cut it back and I'm hoping it comes back later. Also here, nothing came up. I haven't sprouted my asparagus yet, but this is eventually where it'll go tomatoes we did have a few survive and then not do much else and then the last brassica bed let me show you that so this one is thriving we have i think either a cauliflower or a cabbage probably a cabbage it's forming a head this one is a brussels sprout but pretty small and stunted these, I think, are all purple broccoli varieties. So they're doing really well. Um, maybe a purple cauliflower, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea, guys. Flowers on the edges. Oh, here we've got some coriander. So that's doing really well. I've already harvested quite a bit from it. Um, love coriander, more onions and garlics leeks and brassicas.
I did almost forget to mention also we've got some lettuce growing here we tend to just pick at it as we need to and a lot of the time with lettuce we pick the leaves from the outsides first so these ones here and we work our way into the middle and then harvest the rest of the plant but if you pick from the sides it tends to grow leaves back and that way you'll have lettuce all throughout winter from only a few plants so that's it from all of these garden beds here i will go down to the food forest as well and show you guys how that's going um, and on the way there i can actually show you a new project that i started working on so you may notice over here this long line of cardboard and bracken. I'm trying to kill off the grass here so that I can grow some sunflowers or something beautiful so that we can look upon it when we do our chicken butchering next season. We're most likely going to hold um, at least one or two workshops on our property with the chicken butchering give you guys a chance who want to come get some practical skills uh, but also be able to have the confidence and peace of mind of talking to someone else as you do it for the first time is really valuable so hopefully that gives an opportunity to some of you guys or others in the community that want to feel empowered in growing their own meat we've done some more clearing of the tea tree on the pathway here so it's looking so much better and I can actually walk through which is great and down to my food forest so let me show you that. So in the food forest the first thing there is is some native leek um, and that's doing really well. You can harvest it like a chive by getting the green things on top or the root down below. Uh, Warrigal green still not coming back up. I think it's just a bit too cold for them so we'll see how they go. Um, and then over there, we have a tamarind plant, which is doing pretty well. It's looking pretty green, pretty healthy. Let me get a little closer. It's got these beautiful salvia flowers all around it, which I love. But there you go, there it is. It's one of the small plants in the forest. Down below, there's the macadamia tree. And then over here is the native guava. That one's done really well as well. I just love the color on it. Check it out. I think that one might have an ant problem. You can see if I come down below, there's a hole there. So I might have to put some diatomaceous earth and deal with that. There's the macadamia a bit closer. Salt bush <laughs> looks like it's falling over, but it's only doing that because I'm doing a propagation experiment. I'm trying to see if it'll propagate if I put one of the leaves down to the ground like this. So I'll let you know if that works. Raspberry wattle and have a look at the quindong. Come on guys. It's huge. <laughs> Here we've got the Davidson plum doing well as well. Illawarra plum down there, they're two very big trees with bigger fruit, which is why they're at the bottom there. A new addition is we've got some red back ginger, so a native ginger right here. And down below, I forget what this one's called. Let me go have a look at the tag. This one is the gardenia. And look how beautiful. I love the mix of the light green new leaves and then the dark green older leaves. Just stunning. Blue flax lily or dianella. We've got a few varieties of that here. Um, and then over to the side, we have some wild currant. Beautiful. I freed up the bottle brush tree at the back here, so hopefully some more pollinators next season. More Dianella. And then I'm yet to figure out exactly what this one is. I thought it was Midian Berries. The tag says something else, let me get it. Oops, there it is. That's what that tree is. If Sam can put up a picture of what the fruit or the flowers look like, that'll help us to figure out exactly what it is. It is doing well though, very well. Then up at the top of the food forest, we've got, of course, the bush basil, 
which at the moment isn't doing too much. It kind of looks like it's going dormant. Um, it looks like it's producing seeds, but that's been growing really, really well. Over this way, the native oregano, which is going to have these beautiful pink flowers. So really looking forward to it. Um, and then I've got a new variety over here. This one's called the Ostromoratus. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I said that right. Um, and we also have another new plant. We've got some native viola, which is a ground cover with some really cute little edible flowers. More bush basil, doing awesome. Um, and that's about it that's growing here. This is the sand pile, which is a greens alternative. I've got lots of ground cover seeds to plant of this because it was doing really well in springtime and summertime. Um, yeah, some more logs for my pathway to keep going. There is just one more place I need to show you all and that's the fruit orchard which we're turning into a permaculture forest up at the top of the property. So it won't have native edibles like the forest that we just visited. It will be more of the European varieties of fruit trees, so the ones we're most commonly used to eating. Oh yes, this vine grew something. Very green, weird looking pumpkin. Come on, let's go up. Okay, so this little fruit orchard or permaculture food forest isn't looking like much at the moment. So far we have a nectarine tree, two apricot trees, a cherry tree, and then two strawberry guava shrubs. So that's all that's here at the moment. Um, over the next few months I want to add some more shrubs, so probably bringing up that blueberry plant from down below up here. Some more ground covers, um, sweet potatoes things like that, maybe more nasturtiums because they're edible as well, um, and possibly ginger too. So I'll let you guys know how that all goes as I do it. The fruit trees are dormant at the moment, so they're not looking like much. Hopefully you enjoyed that little update on how everything is growing and going at the moment. All the different varieties that we've got on the whole property and this homestead, um, yeah. So I hope that gave you at least a bit of an understanding of what's growing around here in winter, but also what's not growing and that we're all kind of in the same position where it feels like more should be growing than it actually is. So don't be disheartened, keep growing, keep trying um, and come spring and summertime, all our gardens are going to be flourishing with beauty and new growth again soon.